Kafka Streams is an API that promises to revolutionize the way we think about data streaming applications. If you're using Apache Kafka, you are a data engineer, or you're planning on building an event-driven microservices architecture, then you really can't miss out on Kafka Streams. My name is Mati. I'm a software architect with more than 10 years of experience in scalable platforms, and I want to teach you all about Kafka Streams in a series of videos in which we're going to be coding along. Welcome to Programming with Mati. So what is Kafka Streams? It's an API for building real-time stream processing applications. Before Kafka Streams, Kafka didn't really have a, an API for developing this kind of applications. So developers who did want to do this, they had to rely on different third-party APIs like Apache Spark or Apache Flink. This is why the developers of Apache Kafka created Kafka Streams. So what are its main features? It has a high-level, domain-specific language. It's a fluent, functional API, very easy to use. It also has a low-level processor API for very special use cases when you need more control. It has very convenient abstractions like streams, tables, time windows, branches. It leverages on existing Apache Kafka abstractions as well, like consumer groups. And it's also very easy to install. It's just a library, so you can import it in any of your Java applications. It's very scalable. Each instance of your Kafka Streams application works on a single partition so that you can scale your application up to the numbers of partitions in your topic. It's also very reliable. When an instance goes down, the load and the data gets redistributed among all the instances so that you don't lose any data. And finally, it's very easy to maintain because the API is so easy, so intuitive that it doesn't really require much ramp up. It can be used in all kinds of use cases where you need your stream processing in real time in huge amounts of data, like finance and trading, inventory tracking, Internet of Things, machine learning pipelines, video games telemetry, event booking, and so much more. So let's take a look at the first program we're going to make. It's the WorkCount app. The WorkCount app is a very well-known example for getting to know Kafka streams. What we're going to do is we're going to create our own version of this app. Our app will have a Kafka console producer, which we are going to use to create sentences and send them into the sentences topic. Then our application will process these sentences and it will count the amount of times the words appear in our stream. Then the results are going to go to the word count topic, which we're going to read with a Kafka console consumer. So when we insert the sentences, hello Kafka streams, we're going to see this result. Hello one, Kafka one, streams one, which is the amount of times each word appear in the stream. Then we're going to send hello world. And because the word hello appeared twice, we're going to have hello and two, and then world and one, because world appear only one time. And don't worry, you'll be able to download the full code from a GitHub repository, which is linked in the video description. What you will need for this tutorial, you'll have to have installed git docker jdk 15 apache maven 3, an IDE like IntelliJ IDEA, and I'm also assuming that you have a fair amount of knowledge about Java 8 and Apache Kafka. I will add download links for all these dependencies in the video description. So let's jump right into the code. But before you do that, if you're liking the video so far, why don't you go and smash the like button? It really helps me when you do that. Let's create our project from scratch. I'm going to create a new project in IntelliJ, and I'm going to create it as a Maven project. I'm using JDK 15. Uh, let's name it Word Count Sample. You have to choose your group ID. Let's say con programming with Mati word count. No, we're going to put word count here. Word count. And that's it. Let's wait for the creation of the project. And here we have our first project. So now what we have to do is we'll have to add the dependencies for Kafka streams into our project. For that, what we're going to do is type here dependencies and we're going to add a dependency. The dependency that we're going to add is actually Kafka Streams. We're going to be using the latest version of Kafka Streams that we currently have, 
which is the version 2.8.0 and also we're going to add some other dependencies this is these two dependencies are for actually seeing the logs in our application so now we have our dependencies also another thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a file here called log for j dot properties and we're just going to put these properties this is a very basic configuration for log4j this will make sure that all the logs are printed in the standard output so now let's create a class that will contain our code let's call it uh, com programming with dot word count dot word count And here's our first app. So let's uh, let's add a main method. And now we're going to start configuring our app. So the first thing we have to do for our Kafka Streams application, and let me just increase the size of the code here so that we, you can all see. We're going to configure our application. So let's go on and create a properties object. Let's call it props. And we're going to say new properties. And now we're going to start configuring our application. So let's put here different configurations that we need for our application. So we'll need uh, application ID config. This is a configuration that tells Kafka the group ID that we will be using in our application. So if you remember how Kafka works, you can have many consumers belong to the same consumer group. So, when new messages arrive to a topic, every consumer will be assigned to different partitions, and if they are in the same consumer group, they will consume from different partitions. So, for example, if a message that has a given key goes to a partition, it will always go to the same consumer, and that will guarantee that every message for that key will be processed in order. So, let's just call our application ID word count then we have to add the location of our Kafka server. This is called Bootstrap Server. We're going to be using localhost 29092. Another thing that we have to add is our default service. What are service classes? Service classes are the classes that we use in order to tell Kafka streams how to serialize and deserialize the messages in our Kafka topics, hence the name survey. So, since we're going to be using mostly strings, I'm going to say that our default survey is going to be the strings survey. And the same for a value survey. So we have value survey, it's going to be strings. Another thing that we're going to add is a configuration called auto set, auto offset, sorry. And this is actually a consumer config auto offset reset config and this is going to tell Kafka streams to always read the earliest message in the queue. The last property we're going to use is this one called cache max bytes buffering. This tells the Kafka streams application and the last property we're going to add is the cache max bytes buffering. We're going to set it to zero. This is for testing purposes. This property tells Kafka streams how many bytes it has to use for buffering. We're setting it to zero because we want to see all the outputs immediately, but in production, we must not set it to zero. Okay, so let's create our Kafka streams topology. For this, we're going to use a class called stream builder. So new stream builder. And now we're going to build our topology. Before we go on, let's take a look at our application topology. What is an application topology, you might ask? The application topology is what tells Kafka streams how to process every message, and it has the look of a graph. And this is the topology that we are going to be building. So this is what our topology will look like. We're going to be streaming the sentences topic into our application. Then we're going to apply the operation flat map values. And what this operation does is it will map an entry into multiple entries. So in our case, one sentence will be mapped into multiple words. Then we're going to apply a group by operation. 
The group by operation allows you to group different entries by a value, by any kind of value in that message. And we're going to use the group by to group together all the words that are the same. Finally, what we're going to do is we're going to count every word and we're going to store that into a data store. And then we're going to stream the result of the count into our word count topic so that we can read it. All right, so back into our code, let's start building our topology. Okay, so now we're going to stream the topic sentences and we're going to let the Kafka stream application know that it's going to be a message with a key of a string and the value of a string. We don't really have a key for a message, but that doesn't matter. Then we're going to apply the flat map values operation. How do we do this? We create a lambda expression. And what we want to do in the lambda expression is we're going to the value of this message which is a string, we want to split it. And we're going to split it using the space. So if we find a, a blank space, we're going to split the words. Finally, because the flat map values requires you to send a collection, we're going to map this to a list. So let's say arrays as list, okay. Another thing that we're going to do actually is we're going to map everything to lowercase so that uh, words which are in different cases will match. Now we're going to group by and also for grouping by we need a lambda expression. So in this case what we want to do is group by the actual value of the message which is the word. Because we splitted the message and mapped it in using flat map values every value is now a separate word. Now we're going to count every every time each word appear. For this, what we're going to do is use the method count. And we have to send these parameters called materialize with so this string and so this long. So this long. Why do we have to do this? We have to tell Kafka streams how to serialize this in order to store it in a data store. And don't worry about it too much now, but we're going to come back to that later. So if you notice, the method count will return a K table. This is something that we will also be discussing in later videos. But for now, what we're going to do is we're going to transform this table into a stream. And finally, we're going to send the result of this stream into our topic called word count. We also have to tell how to serialize this. And because the key of our message will be our word, we're going to be using the service string. And for the value, which is the count, we're going to be using service long. And that's it we have created our topology. So once we declare the topology, the topology doesn't run. For the topology to run, we have to create a Kafka Streams application. So let's go on and create one. Let's say Kafka Streams new Kafka Streams. And we had to send as parameter the streams builder dot build and the properties that we declared before. Then we had to execute the method start. And finally, what we're going to do is we're going to add a hook for our application to shut down the Kafka Streams application when we send a stop application sign off. So when we shut down our application, our Kafka Streams consumer will shut down gracefully. Okay, so now we have to create the Docker Compose file. What we're going to do is we're going to run our Kafka server in Docker. So to do that, we are going to create a file called Docker Compose. I'm assuming you're familiar with Docker and Docker Compose, but for those of you that are not, Docker Compose, it's a file format to define services that we want to run on Docker containers. And it has a very simple declarative syntax so yeah, I'm sure you will be able to follow along just fine. So first thing, we have to declare the version of the file. It's going to be three. Then we have to declare the services. 
first service we're going to declare is Zookeeper. The image for Zookeeper that we're going to use is this one. Host name Zookeeper. Keeper. Container name Zookeeper. Ports. We're going to use these ports. And then environment Zookeeper. client port. This is the port in which Zookeeper will receive uh, connections. 3, 2, 1, A, 1. And Zookeeper take time. Now we're going to declare a service for Kafka. The image we're using is also version 6 hostname Kafka container name also Kafka depends on Zookeeper because as we know Kafka requires Zookeeper to run uh, the ports that we're going to be exposing are these and then environment variables environment and I'm just going to copy paste it. And by the way, all this is already in my repository that I share in the video description. And here you will find a, a good readme file to understand the project and how to run it exactly. So don't worry about it too much. You will also have the Docker Compose file completed here. And we are going to create one more container and this other container will only create the topics that we're going to need. So we're going to create two topics, remember, sentences and word count. So what we can see here, we have a working directory called scripts and here's where we're going to put all our scripts. So let's create it. New directory scripts scripts and let's create a file called create topics sh and in this file what we're going to do is we are going to create all the topics we need so I'm copy pasting it and what we say here is we first we make sure that cafe is running and then we create two topics first we create the sentences topic and then the word count topic so i believe we can run our docker composer i'm going to open the terminal and let's say docker compose up you can see docker is starting it also created topics and with IntelliJ, I can check that my Docker Compose is running with all the services. I have Zookeeper here, I have Kafka here. Everything is running fine. And the topics were created. So we're ready to start our application. Before starting our application, what we're going to do is we're going to start our Kafka Console producer and our Kafka Console consumer so that we can start sending messages and be ready to listen messages that we get on the word count topic. To do this, what we're going to do is we are going to open a terminal in our Docker container. So create terminal here. And we're going to create the Kafka console producer using the Kafka console producer command. And we have to send the topic so our topic is going to be sentences and we have to also say what is our bootstrap server bootstrap server in this case it will be localhost 1992 because we are inside the container and that's it we now have a Kafka console consumer the other thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a different terminal and we're going to create a Kafka console consumer and in this case we're going to send a few parameters so I'm going to copy paste it here are the parameters that we're going to send 
first topic, of course, is word count. Then the bootstrap server. Then we're going to say that we want to listen from the beginning of the topic. Then if we want to print the key, we're going to say yes, print the key. In this case, the key would be our word. Then we have the property key separator. We're going to be using a colon for separating the key from the value. And then we're going to say the key deserializer will have to be a string deserializer. And the value deserializer in our case is a long deserializer because we're sending numbers. So just press enter. And now our consumer is listening. So finally, what we're going to do is we're going to go to our application and just run. We have to wait for it to start running. And there it is. Our application is already running. So now we're going to go to our console producer and we're going to send the messages hello Kafka streams. Let's take a look at our consumer. And as we expected, we have hello one Kafka one streams one. And now what we're going to do is we're going to send another message saying hello world. And again, we had two more messages, but this time because hello was already twice in our stream, we have the number two here. And we can also try sending words with um, different cases, for example, hello Kafka. And these words should match the ones that we already had in a stream because we put everything in lowercase. And as we expected, hello is three times and Kafka is two times. Wow, so we finally saw our application running and uh, you might be wondering how does it work? So let's go back to our topology. So remember, first we divided our sentences into individual words using the flat mat value operation. After that, we grouped our words by the very same word. So our, in this operation, our word actually became the key for our messages and uh, this is something that we'll have to keep in mind because it will trigger something that it's called in Kafka streams a repartition which we will speak later in other videos and finally we added the count operation the count operation is a stateful operation because it actually saves the state because in order to count we had to store the current amount of words that we have already processed, right? So in our data store, we're actually storing the count for each word. And that is how Kafka Streams works. And that is why we saw in the code earlier that we had a K table instead of a K stream. We are going to discuss more about K streams and K tables later, but I wanted this to be a quick introduction for you guys to start getting a feel of how easy Kafka Streams actually is to understand and to work with. But we're going to deep dive on the concepts of Kafka Streams, like K streams, K tables, time windows, branches, etc. In our next video, what we're going to do is we're going to use the concepts of the stream, K stream, and stateless operations to translate non-English messages in our Kafka topic into English. So I'll be waiting you all in the next video. And before you go, if you like this video, please smash the like button. It really helps me when you do that. Thank you. See you later. Bye.